Now that we've defined what congruent triangles are, we're going to talk about how to prove that triangles are congruent. And that relies on things called postulates and theorems. The first one that we like to talk about is called SSS, which stands for side, side, side. And what's that, what that's saying is if side AB is congruent to side DE and side BC is congruent to side EF and side AC is congruent to side DF, then we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And that means to say then, because we said earlier that if we have congruent triangles, that we have six parts that are congruent to six parts. And so automatically, we get this for free, that angle A is going to be congruent then to angle D, and angle B is going to be congruent then to angle E, and angle C is going to be congruent to angle F. We've just proven then by a postulate, meaning it always works this way. If I have three sides of a triangle congruent to three sides of another triangle, then those triangles have to be congruent, that we get for free, that the three angles are congruent to the three angles. In another instance, we have another postulate, and this one's called the side angle side postulate, meaning that if I had side AB and called it congruent to side DE, and called angle B and congruent to angle E, and side BC congruent to side EF, then I have created side angle side congruence, meaning that I can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF because of side angle side congruence. Now notice once again, we have three things that are congruent to three things. AB is congruent to DE, angle B is congruent to angle E, and side BC is congruent to side EF. Now also notice that side angle side has to happen in that order, that I have to have a side then an angle, and then the next side be congruent in order to get side angle side congruence. This wouldn't work if I said side AB is congruent to side DE, side BC is congruent to side EF, and angle C is congruent to angle F. That's uh, another discussion, but there is no such thing as side side angle. So we'll talk about that later. If that doesn't work. We have to have what's called the included angle because B is included in being made from side AB and side BC, and angle E is included in between side DE and side EF. So that's side angle side congruence postulate. All right now let's see if we know enough about triangle congruence to determine some things. We've just learned about side 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 uh, proving that triangles are congruent and we've also learned that side angle side uh, proves that triangles are congruent. So let's look at number 22 here. Number 22 says determine which postulate can be used to prove that the triangles are congruent. If it is not possible to prove that they are congruent, right, not possible. Okay, number 22, look at this. Well, we've got on uh, this one triangle right here, we have this side is congruent to this side right here. So we've got two sides that are congruent to each other, and we have this side is congruent to this side. So we have two sides that are congruent to each other, and uh, they seem to be looking pretty good so far. Do we have it? We have side, side, oh, but here. If you look right here in the middle, we've got this side is part of one triangle, but it's also part of another triangle. And we can say that one side is congruent to itself. This segment here is congruent to itself. And so, therefore, we have another side that is congruent that is in this triangle and in this triangle. And since that's the case, we have side, side, side congruence. And so, yes, we can say side, side, side congruence. And so there we go. Let's take a look at this other one. So number 23, we have two triangles now. And we're looking at the situation where I have side congruent to a side. That's good. I have another side that's congruent to another side, but I don't get that third side but I do get an angle and an angle. Well, would that be enough information to prove that these two triangles are congruent? Well, we know that if we had side, 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 but we don't have that. We know that if we have side, angle, side, but we don't have the angle in the middle because we would need this angle to be congruent to this angle, but we don't have that. We have this angle is congruent to this angle. So the best that we have is side, side, angle. Well, we haven't been given a postulate or a theorem that says that. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is not possible. Let's take a look at this one here. I'm gonna give you a chance to try it in a little while. I'll come back and see if you've done it. The answer is coming in three, two, one. Now, in this triangle right here, we have that this angle is congruent to this angle. And we also have that this side is in both triangles and is congruent to itself. And so I have a side that is congruent to a side and I have an angle that is congruent to an angle, but I don't have anything else. What do you think? Do we have congruent triangles here? No, so I'm going to go ahead and say not possible because there isn't enough information. Let's go to the next one. So number 25 says, I have a side that is congruent to a side, a side that is congruent to a side, and I have a side that is congruent to a side. And I have that this angle is congruent to this angle. Well, I have side, angle, side, 
is congruent to side angle side. Hey, that's enough information. And so yes, I do have enough information and I can say by side angle side, we also have congruence. This one kind of has a bonus because I also want you to see that if we looked at this side that is congruent to itself, we also have side is congruent to side and side is congruent to side and side is congruent to side. So that's also by side, side, side. So we could also say side, side, side and side angle side. Another congruent triangle postulate says angle, side, angle, meaning if I took angle A and said it was congruent to angle D, and side AB and said it was congruent to side DE, and angle B and said that it was congruent to angle E, then I've accomplished angle, side, angle. Notice the order in which I'm saying that. The side is included in between two angles, meaning I'm saying angle, side, angle, and notice the side has to be between two respective angles. In this case right here, I have that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So what that means then is that I get the other pieces for free, meaning now I can say angle C is congruent to angle F, and that side BC is congruent to side EF, and finally that side AC is congruent to side DF. Those are the pieces that come for free as a result of this postulate that says angle side angle congruent to angle side angle gives congruent triangles. So now we have one that's different, and it's called angle angle side. And this one's now called a theorem, so it's called the angle angle side theorem. And it's provable. Watch how this works. So angle A is congruent to angle D, angle B is congruent to angle E, and so angle C has to be congruent to angle F, and that's because of something called the third angles theorem. Since the angles always add up to 180 degrees, and angle A plus B is equal to angle D plus E, then we subtract from 180 degrees and we get the measure of angle C, and we get the measure of angle F, and we find that those are the same. So see, that's the proof for it right there, that angle angle side then is the same as getting angle side angle, and so therefore, with angle angle side, I get that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Then as a result of that, all the other stuff kind of comes along with it, that now we get side AB is congruent to side DE, and side AC is congruent to side df. And once again, we have six parts are congruent to six parts. Okay, so we know side, 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 angle, side. We also know angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side all prove congruence. So let's see if we have enough information to prove some of these. Let's look at number two here. So number two says, is it possible to prove that the triangles are congruent? If so, state the postulate or theorem you would use and explain your reasoning. Okay, so number two says, is RST and triangle TQR, are they congruent triangles? Well, let's see. I see an angle SRT is congruent to angle QTR. So yes, I have an angle that is congruent to an angle. And do I have another angle? Well, yes, I do, because I have STR is congruent to QRT. So I have this angle is congruent to this angle. So I do have two angles that are congruent to each other. Wouldn't it be nice if I had a side that was congruent to a side? Well, I do, because look at this. These two triangles are formed using RT as a side. So this side RT is congruent to this side RT. And so I have two angles that are congruent, and I have a side. So I do have angle, side, angle, and that proves that triangle RST is congruent to triangle TQR by angle, side, angle. So this next one says, is JKL congruent to NML? So why don't you take some time in looking at that? I'm going to come back in a minute, and I'll prove it to you. The answer is coming in three, two, one. In JKL, I have that this side right here is congruent to this side over here for NML. So, um, so I've got two sides that are congruent to each other. I also have two angles that are congruent to each other. Angle K is congruent to angle M. Well, wouldn't it be nice if I could say KL is congruent to ML, but I'm not given that information. Well, how about this? What about angle MLN and angle KLJ? Wouldn't it be nice if this angle was congruent to this angle? Yes, they are, because look at this. Line MJ and line KN are crossing each other, and when they cross, they form vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. So since vertical angles are congruent, I can automatically say that this angle is congruent to this angle. And so since that's the case, look at what I have now. I have that side angle angle is congruent to side angle angle, which is the same as saying angle angle side. And so I'm going to say, yes, I have enough information, and it's angle angle side. So there we go. Let's take a look at this next one. Our triangles, DFE and triangle JGH, are they congruent triangles? Let's talk about them. We've got this angle is congruent to this angle. This angle is congruent to this angle. But I don't see in any case where there are any sides. I'm going to say not possible. Because you need a side, right? So there that is. Let's take a look at some of these here. 
Is it possible to prove that the triangles are congruent? If so, state the postulator theorem you would use and explain your reasoning. All right, for number eight, I have that angle S is congruent to angle T and side SV is congruent to side TV. Do we get anything else? The point V, I have vertical angles again, and so I've got angle SVR is congruent to angle UVT. And so, yes, indeed, I do get that this angle is congruent to this angle. I get angle, side, angle. So angle, side, angle, yes, they are congruent. How about number nine? Is there enough information? I have side PQ is congruent to side ST. And I also have that side MS is congruent to side QR. And I have that this is 90 degrees and that this is 90 degrees. And 90 degrees and 90 degrees means that those are congruent angles. So don't I have side, angle, side? Yes, I do. So side, angle, side tells me that those two triangles are congruent. And we're ignoring the fact that we are talking about right triangles because that doesn't really come into play here. Okay, here's one. Well, this one's gonna take a little bit of thinking and here's how it goes. It's, it's the idea that I have this angle is congruent to this angle. And if you start by focusing on the triangle A, B, D, that that's an isosceles triangle because of the two angles congruent to each other. So since that's the case, the sides opposite those angles are going to be congruent. And so we can say that. And so side AB is congruent to side BD. And those are congruent sides. So now let's see, do we have enough information? I think we do. And the reason why is because I know that this angle right here is going to be 90 degrees. Because if this one is 90 degrees, right here, then this has to be 90 degrees because that's a straight angle and that's 180. So 180 minus 90 is 90, so that makes that 90 degrees. Now do I have enough information? Yeah, I think I do because look at what I have now. I can say angle, angle, side is congruent to angle, angle, side, and that gives me a congruent triangle. So we're saying by angle, angle, side, we have congruent triangles. So to finish off the congruent triangles, postulates, and theorems, we have one theorem left and it's called the hypotenuse leg theorem. Hypotenuse leg says that if I have the hypotenuse QR of this first triangle PQR, and it's a right triangle, so the leg opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse, and that hypotenuse is congruent to the hypotenuse of another right triangle TU in triangle STU. And that's a right triangle because it has a right angle, and the side opposite that right angle is called TU. And so QR is congruent to TU. Well, if we say that QP is congruent to TS, then that's all we need. We only need two parts because we need a hypotenuse and we need a leg. So we say that the hypotenuse of PQR is congruent to the hypotenuse of triangle STU and leg PQ is congruent to leg ST. That means that I have enough information to say that triangle PQR is congruent to triangle STU. We get all the benefits of congruent triangles, meaning now that I can say that, that means that angle Q is congruent to angle T and angle R is congruent to angle U. Angle P is already congruent to angle S because they're both right angles and all right angles are congruent. But so we have the angles that are congruent and then also finally we can say that PR is congruent to SU. And so there's the benefits once again of a situation where we have right triangles this time with the hypotenuse leg theorem saying that all I need is the hypotenuse and the leg of a right triangle to be congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of another right triangle and all the other pieces are going to be congruent. And so there we have it the congruent triangle postulates and theorems. Okay, we now know that side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and hypotenuse leg are all reasons that we can say that triangles are congruent. So let's see if we have that here uh, in these situations. Determine whether you are given enough information to prove that the triangles are congruent and explain your answer. So let's look at number five here. Is triangle MNQ congruent to QPM? I see that uh, in this case right here, I have that side MN is congruent to side PQ. And I have that it's a right angle, and I have that this is a right angle. And I also have that MQ is a side that's congruent to itself, and it's a part of both triangles. Well, MQ is the hypotenuse of both these triangles, because this is opposite this right angle, and this is opposite this right angle. So those are the hypotenuses, and they are congruent to each other. And so since we can say that those are congruent to each other, and we just put a circle there to show that that's congruent, by hypotenuse leg, we have enough information to say that triangle MNQ is congruent to triangle QPM. Let's see if we have this here. Number six says we have equiangular triangles, but that doesn't give us any triangle congruence because we don't know any lengths of any sides and there is no angle 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 congruence postulate so we can say not possible. Number seven here let's think about this one for a little bit. We have angle angle side we don't know anything about the angles but we do know that those are uh, congruent 
Now, maybe we can make some possible suggestions here. I know that BC is opposite of angle A, then that means that AC is going to be congruent to BC because we know that that's an isosceles triangle. But we don't know about this guy right here. In this case right here, we sure have that these angles are all congruent to each other, but we don't know if they're congruent to these, tri these angles right here because we don't know that the, the length of that side. So I'm going to say there's not enough information here and this is not possible. Well, let's take a look at this one here. What we want to do here is actually ignore that this angle is congruent to this angle. And I'll show you the reason why. Because we know this side is congruent to itself, and UT is congruent to TW, and WV is congruent to VU, and TV is congruent to itself, and so by side, 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 we do have enough information to prove that those two triangles are congruent. We'll do one more. How about number 12? Okay, here we go. AD is congruent to AB, and if we consider the large triangle ABD, then we know that angle B is going to be congruent to angle D because of the uh, base angles there. So we have side, side, angle. Hmm. Because AC is congruent to itself, but we have side, side, angle. But there is no side, side, angle congruence theorem. So I'm going to say for the moment here that we don't know. We don't know for sure on this one. So it's not possible at this point. And there's a little bit more information that needs to be known.